Hello, my name is Bethan Walker and I play Alizé in Final Fantasy XIV. So, I have been playing Alizé for six years now and I auditioned first after a production of Cinderella that I was in, playing Cinderella, and a very, very lovely director who I am very grateful for must have put my name forward, I assumed, and um, I was brought into a studio called Side Studios in London, in central London, and asked to read, now then, about six lines, eight lines, not many, for a game not called Final Fantasy. We of course weren't told what it was for and I did my very best and I read the lines as well as I could, truthfully not understanding a huge amount about video games. I admire them. I know there's an enormous amount of very successful, very beautiful games out there and I know that there are some incredibly talented voice artists, but I didn't know much about it at the time, if I'm honest with you. So I did my research as best I could, but if you don't know what game you're in, there's only so much research you can do. So I had to go with my instincts that day, which I certainly did. And I remember recording lines, you know, they give you a, um, a variety of emotional states to play. Some wry, some um, pained, some funny, some uh, grief-stricken, you know, all sorts of different states just to see how you would read those lines, how you would record those lines. So I did my very best on the day, thoroughly enjoyed it. I remember loving the um, the sort of non-verbal battle cry stuff, you know, we were asked to do a couple of minutes of improvisation, of physical exertion, whether that be fighting or waking up or crying or laughing, whatever that may be. And that's great for an actor, it's really exciting. So I was able to give my all to that. And then I went for a coffee and went home, like I normally do after castings, and waited. Didn't think hugely about it, to be honest. I remember thinking there's a lot of talented actors out there, we'll just see what happens. And then I got the call, an email, I think. I think it was an email from my agent saying, we're delighted to say that you've been offered the role. So I accepted and it's been the most extraordinary journey. It really has. I think in terms of inspiration, I find myself looking to the women in my life whose lives are very, very different from Alizé's but they feel things and they've experienced things and I think my personal opinion as an actress is looking around you and people watching is one of the best things you can do. That and serving the text looking in deep into the text and working out why the writer has written that line in that particular way and really paying attention to the detail of punctuation and breath and exclamation marks and I, th I think that stuff feeds in so so much to our performance and I really try and um, pay attention to that. I think the process of recording Alizé has surprised me. I think I've been amazed at how much I've needed to give to her emotionally, in that I'm a lot more invested in her character than I ever thought I would be. You know, so many jobs are just jobs, and this is not just a job for me. This has gone way beyond that and I think it's the time you know it's a long time I've had two children since I started this job and lots has happened in my life and I think that I 
I'm really deeply invested in who she is now, so much so than when I go in to record, I, I feel it, you know, I feel it deeply. Every line that I say now has a, a real meaning to me. And now I've met Colin, my twin, which happened a matter of weeks ago, I think it's going to be taken on to a whole new level now. The process of recording is not what you'd expect. We record alone in studio with a sound engineer and with COVID now, our director is normally uh, in our ears, in cans or headphones, and we listen to them and we say hi and we catch up and then we start work. So we read our lines from a screen in front of the microphone. Now we've had our scripts before, beforehand, but not we don't get a huge amount of time. We often get, you know, if we're really lucky, we'll get a week, but it's normally a couple of days. And we work really hard on our scripts and prepare them as well as we possibly can. And then bring them in and go for it line by line. We're fed a line back from the last recording we did just to listen to, to sort of cue in uh, with our vocal technique. And then we just commit to the moment and go for it. And it's been, with Alizé, I would say, easier each recording gets slightly easier not in terms of content definitely not in terms of content because it's possibly harder technically now than it's ever been and by that I mean the emotional uh, connection to the character is running deeper and the physical exertion is harder and uh, the emotional intensity whether that be joy or pain is just that bit bigger than it was when I first started recording but I know her so well now, you know, I've said this before, it, it's like stepping into an old pair of slippers. Like, I know her so well, so, so, so well. And I love her dearly. I love recording these scenes. There's, there's nothing I've not enjoyed. So it, it's a real privilege. It's a real privilege. And uh, at the end of every session, we do our physical exertion, battle cry stuff. So. It, some actors find it hard, I really enjoy it personally. It's, it's a real passion of mine, the, the, the physical embodiment of what you're being asked to do. So that's normally screaming, fighting, crying, laughing, sometimes really subtle things like just lifting a head or slamming a head on a table, whatever it may be. But I really enjoy that technical aspect of it. So we do those bits and then we're done and we go home and um, look forward to that piece that bit of game coming out which is sometimes a little bit of a wait um, and yeah we go in a couple of times a year no more than that the last record I did was 12 hours broken up into little sections over a few days so um, it's always been an amazing process and I always look forward to that email saying would you like to come back in I think in recent months, especially since Endwalker with some of the promotion that's been out and the interviews that have been out and uh, there's been a lot more exposure with the actors, they've been talking a little bit more about their experience and I've learned a lot about everybody else's journey, you know, not just mine as Alizé. It's been really, uh, it's been really lovely listening to other actors that I have, without ever meeting, worked alongside. And, you know, I've been at some events recently and had a chance to talk to them. And it's been really wonderful hearing it from their side. And I know of their characters, I know their voices, and, it, and it's been really remarkable meeting them face to face and hearing more about their experience and what it's been like. I mean, there are so many characters that I love dearly. Um, so, uh, Ishtola and Thancred and uh, Estinian and you know there are some beautifully written characters they're all beautifully written but I just think there's so much to admire about other actors work and we are who we are as actors and I think you can learn so much by spending time with and listening to other actors work because their process isn't necessarily 
the same process I've had. Um, and when I met them it was lovely because we were able to share a little bit about what our process was like in the preparation for the role and also in the recording process and watching the games come out and you know we've all done very similar interviews but we've only met very very recently so it's been it's been really amazing it's like family you know meeting the people that you've been walking this journey with. I think in terms of favourite scenes, I mean, Colin would be cross if I said it wasn't to do with Alphano. So it's definitely Alphano, but it actually is because uh, I love their scenes. I love their scenes. I love how real the bickering is. I love how much people feel it. Like I get so many messages from people saying, you're just like me and my brother, or you're just like me and my twin. Um, and, I, and I have a sister and we bickered. so. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to love someone so much and yet find them so infuriating. It's very normal, isn't it, as humans to feel that. Um, but the love between them, like my sister and I were incredibly close and we still are. And I think with Alphano and Alizé, that love between them, we're only just starting to see that now. And there are scenes in Endwalker that I won't spoil for anybody, but there are some really breathtaking scenes coming up, um, which I found really moving to record, you know, and I hadn't met Colin then. So I think that's why when we met, we just kept hugging because it was just huge. It was momentous for us to meet each other after six years of recording and never having met. So I feel really privileged now. I've always felt privileged with this job, but but immensely so now to be able to record alongside these other actors. I think another really special scene for me, there has been so many, so, so, so many over the years, but I think the, the scenes with Gabu have been really special for me. My children are always close in my mind and my heart when I'm recording those scenes. And the director that we're working with at the moment is a father, and I've known him for many years. We did a play together, actually. We did Midsummer Night's Dream together on tour. So when I walked into studio and heard his voice, I was really surprised and very pleased um, to hear his voice. But he challenges me a lot when it comes to scenes like that, the scenes that require tenderness, and um, compassion and empathy and he often says to me be brave and do less do less vocally because I think those moments when we're caring for people whether that be our children or somebody else's children or a parent or a friend it's effortless vocally in real life if you really are caring for someone in that very intimate beautiful way and when you love them so dearly, we don't try with our voices when we do that. So I've, I've found that really exciting as a voice actor to find that sense of trust in my director that I don't need to do anything. And he often says to me, do less, just relax and do less. So, so I have found those scenes really, um, really special. There are also some scenes coming up with Alphano that have required a new depth for me as an actor. Um, emotionally, it is harder than anything I've had to play before in terms of truth and fury and passion and love as Alizé. There are scenes approaching, some of you have played it all, I know, but for those who haven't, I won't ruin it, but I knew what I was a part of in that moment when we were recording. I knew how huge it would be for us actors, but also the fans. And I think it's a really extraordinary thing as an actor to be allowed to be a part of such a momentous moment. And I think it was a real, highlight for me, a real career highlight. And I think 
you'll know what I mean when you play that scene. In terms of Alizé's future, I'm not going to say a thing about the plot because I really don't want to spoil it for those who are so invested, but I suspect there's more for her. That's all I can say. I know that her journey uh, has been huge and I know that there is more coming for her. I know that there are um, elements of the plot that haven't been resolved and of course the joke is we don't know either. I actually don't know what's going to happen to her. I don't know what the resolution of her story will be. I don't know what the resolution of the whole story will be or the other characters, but I'm as invested now, you know, as you guys are, and I'm so excited and I'm watching my inbox because you never know when I might get that email saying, please come back in, if it comes, I don't know. Uh, it's been an absolutely remarkable process to be a part of, and I feel hugely privileged, hugely privileged she is um, always going to be very, very close to me now. You know, she's like a sister that I will walk with through my career and I feel mighty blessed to have played her. <laughs>